Hi Jens. Hello. Hello. How are you Hi. doing? Very good. And you? Fine. Well, first of all, thank you for the beautiful review, Jens. It was fantastic, really touching. Uh, <laughs> and thanks um, for loving our music too. Well, um, yeah, f um, congratulations for your wonderful CD. I mean, uh, um, it's uh, really amazing the, the variety of styles and uh, the quality of sound and the quality of singing and playing. I, I uh, hear it often and uh, I like it very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> Martin didn't pay me uh, for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so first question would be uh, how you started to work together. Or where did where did it all begin? Your your uh, um, I mean you're a pretty young duo as I uh, as I've heard. Yeah, I mean it's like almost one year that we started and it all began with the lockdown situation in Spain so we were you know in March April it started people were locked in and we thought we should do something be creative and then we uh, started with a few pop song recordings like we did we did a few covers and that came out so good that we thought we should go on with this and um, so we made an EP with four songs and released it through uh, recordjet.com and uh, later on we just changed our musical path we would you know uh, come across more uh, international songs and classics and yeah but the whole idea really went uh, on when we got into this Spanish lockdown you know so mm -hmm. that was the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe uh, and the question would be even uh, further, more in in the in the past. Uh, and and how did you meet? Or, or how? Uh, we met on a, on a during a gig. We we both were doing events and playing around like crazy. And then in. 2019 September we two bands got together he was part of one of them and I was part of the other and we performed together for one evening and that was it <laughs> <laughs> so that's how should musicians should meet normally <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay um could you please, um, I mean, the, the readers of Guitar Acoustic uh, know Martin, uh, but could you please uh, uh, both uh, tell a little bit concerning your, oh, the, the English word is Vita as well, or Vita? Or yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. I start? You can start if you want. It is well, first. I, I was, I come from a family of artists, my family also were in the show business but not nothing related to music they were circus artists mm -hmm. and uh, i was growing up uh, i grew up traveling all over the world with shows circus shows theme parks and it was really exciting and when i was already very small i knew that i want to be on a stage a part of a show but then mm -hmm. Just till uh, when I was around 19 year old, I realized that I could do something with music. My mother, she would keep telling me, you can sing, you can sing. Mm -hmm. And she was pushing me to go to music lessons. And and then we here on Mallorca, around year 1999, 2000, I started to work a little bit as a singer here and there. I have the chance to meet good musicians of the island and being part of their project and then another project and another project and 
Slowly it was getting better and better. And yeah, I had the chance to work with really good people. And then I met Martin and now I'm in the biggest and most beautiful project I ever been in. Thank you. Okay. And Martin? Yeah, uh, so I was playing a lot in the Cologne music scene uh, after two years of studying in the uh, Netherlands on a, on a jazz school. I entered Cologne music scene, I was playing in clubs and in events and I ended up in a band that would play also with great artists like Gloria Gaynor and uh, Krista Berg. And so, yeah, I was pretty involved into live playing a lot. And um, later on in 2002, we made a recording with a band called Anmosa. Um, that was a band with a singer from uh, the States called um, uh, Soleil Niklasson. And we had a kind of a acoustic Latin sound as well with two guitars, percussion. And that went pretty well with a record label in uh, Stuttgart called Blue Flame. And with this project we had quite a few gigs, uh, good festival gigs, and uh, that went on for five years kind of. And later on I uh, yeah, just uh, um, continued playing in, in you know, local bands from Cologne. And 2005, 2006 I also started working for a guitar magazine, you know, the one and um, so in 2010 I even took uh, you know uh, the position of being you know in charge of the CD producing and transcriptions and workshops a lot so yeah and besides that I had I was involved into many projects original projects but this one now is one of you know 100% uh, original like you know giving the full potential and you know blood, sweat and tears is, is, is all into it, you know. And I'm really happy to, because I was doing many dual uh, projects, but this one is now really musically and, um, you know, on a, uh, you know, a love relationship basis, really the project that is really fulfilling me, mm -hmm. 150%. And uh, we're lucky to be able to record all these different styles and uh, we are, you know, about to do the second album and it's ongoing process so we're really happy mm -hmm. so uh, in brackets maybe I the the uh, guitar questions I ask Martin and uh, <laughs> you <could> answer <laughs> the other questions so, so it's a little uh, so we have both of you in the interview is that okay? is that all right sure, yeah, sure. <laughs> if you ask so, me about guitars <laughs> It's not going to be very productive. <laughs> you know, but of course, it would be nice to have you both of you in in the interview, and not only uh, guitar talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so let's let's start with guitar talk. Could you please <laughs> uh, tell a little bit about your philosophy philosophy of guitar sound? Uh, I mean, you play nylon string guitar, um, and uh, these songs are more associated with uh, steel string or electric guitar. Or much. Uh, how did you come to a nylon string guitar? Well, I was playing nylon guitar all my life. I started with nylon uh, string guitar when I was ten, but. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't go into classical music too much. I was, you know, um, you know, I, have, I had teachers who would teach me to play, you know, like uh, popular songs, like Beatles songs. Mm -hmm. And I never left the nylon guitar. It was always, you know, part of my playing. Mm -hmm. But um, okay, main part of the job was the electric to, you know, pay my bills. But uh, as I mentioned, I had a project in 2002 starting uh, with this band called Almosa. We had a uh, kind of Latin jazz sound and that was pretty much nylon acoustic mainly and uh, so I never uh, got off that one you know so and, and for this project it it's the perfect instrument I mean for Latin based music for all these bossa samba grooves mm. it's and the nylon string always you know is so touching it's like you know it goes straight to your heart no matter what you play 
Um, this happens, you know, you can play like Shape of My Heart and it's, you know, reaches everybody. And that's the magic of nylon string. So you don't have to, to, to do anything about the sound. You put a little bit of reverb and that's it, you know. Um, so uh, I really appreciate this instrument a lot. And it's in this project even more amazing because um, when you start arranging these songs, these Latin songs, um, you f and especially in a duo concept, it's um, it's a, no, a new world, a complete new world. You start inventing new chords, new voicings to match the song arrangement, to match the vocal line, and it's like starting it from from zero because you end up with song uh, uh, with arrangement, voicings, and chords that you probably never come across. And mm -hmm. that's you know even more beautiful after even after 30 years of playing. It's wow, you know, a whole new world starts up now. Mm -hmm. So that's why I stick a lot to nylon string. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, um, maybe a question for Alicia. <laughs> I hope I pronounced the name right. Alicia? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, um, the German word is Vorbilder. I think the, the translation is uh, examples or um, idols. Or idols. Oh. Uh, are there any idols or for uh, that you follow or in that you were inspired by uh, concerning your duo um, um, besetzung? Martin, please help uh, me. Like you, uh, do you have any idols uh, that you would look upon now doing no. our project now as a duo? Do you have no, I, I mean, I mean, besetzung. Um, I don't get the um, like a lineup, a setup, setup, <laughs> duo setup. Yeah. Well, um, I can't name one. I'm a big fan of Edith Piaf and all these big singers from all times. I was following a lot singers like Aretha, Tina Turner, Gladys Knight, even. Um, Shirley Bassey and I'm a big fan of Italian music. I love Italian music, so there is many artists who who I was listening to all my life. And and then when I met Martin, he was he introduced me more into this acoustic world, acoustic duo world, and he was showing me a lot of duo as well. Of course, Ella and Joe Pass and um, Tak and Patti and many other great mm -hmm. people to to in, be inspired of. But I, I was always listening, you know, my father, he was from Argentina, so I had from my father's side all this tango and, and folklore, South American, Latino sound. My mother from Sweden, she brought the rock and roll in the house and Simon and Garfunkel and Cat Stevens. So it's a mix of everything there. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yes. Great. And, um, and Martin, what what makes good comping for you <laughs> in a as a guitarist? What is what is essential to be a good uh, company uh, player? Yeah. Well, I would say for me, the main focus is to uh, provide a good rhythm and uh, provide chords that you know capture. The overall harmony, and uh, so I would always try to, uh, you know, play uh, and accompany in in the in the way that the style is presented, pretty much. You know, when I play bossa or samba or whatever kind of groove, I try to stick to it, and um, I would maybe then later on fool around with arrangement, like uh, in terms of chord changes, harmony changes, but. For me, it's essential to play a good rhythm, you know, and mm -hmm. that keeps it all together. And sound-wise as well, I try to, to capture a, a wide variety of, of uh, harmonic spectrum, so the singer is really, you know, into the whole picture embedded by the guitar sound. Mm -hmm. I try to think of having a, a sound that is, um, yeah, kind of, that doesn't leave any gaps, that doesn't leave anything, so you get the full picture. You know, let's say you, you would play a song like Gracias a la Vida to, to play it in a way that you won't miss anything. You won't miss a bass, you won't miss any drums or percussion or strings or keys. 
Mm -hmm. You know, and the guitar is really capable to do that. You can really play rhythm and bass lines and chords, and so in the end, you wouldn't you wouldn't miss anything of that. And you know, you would be, and that's to me really fascinating. When we're done with one song, it's it's incredible how large the picture is. You were really into a landscape of sound. You were really like in the movies. Yeah. And this is the power of acoustic <coughs> guitar, power of nylon strings, especially. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, it needs uh, not only a good guitar, but also a good player. Absolutely. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was, when, when uh, we started this, I was a little bit scared because I was never into an acoustic project in my life. I did some acoustic um, events here and there, which they were not really satisfying me. <laughs> so I was a little bit like, oh, yo, yo, I'm going to be missing this and miss it. But with Martin and his arrangements, it's just heaven to sing with him, heaven. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. <laughs> Great. Uh-huh. Uh, what I think is, is very special about your program and what I like very much is the variety of styles. I mean, you have uh, samba, tango, jazz standards, uh, French chansons. chansons. Uh, how would you uh, call Italian chansons? Is there a name for that? Are we not really? We was actually thinking about this the other day. Yeah, I mean, when we uh, thought about the song we did, this uh, Pino Daniele song, Quando, it's not. When you think of Italian pop, it's maybe not the right uh, style to to name it <laughs> or the, the right genre to name it like. But uh, yeah. The, it's hard to say. Yeah, but <laughs> Italian music, it's already, even if you call it pop, is already written in such a melodic way that uh, it's already become chanson, even if it's a pop song. Italian uh, composers are amazing. And there's a few ones that were genius, like Lucio Dalla, Pino Daniele. And uh, it, it hurts me to call them pop songs. <laughs> But technically they are, but they don't sound like pop songs. Well, well but canzonetta is not the right word. Maybe, but canzonetta is more, I think, more singer, so writer, more, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> but we have to check out this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Italian chanson, one could say that. I mean, it's not so important. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, it's a little bit... Um, um, yeah, this is not common in German, Germany. Um, people don't know Lucio Dalla. Maybe they know Zucchero, but uh, but we know uh, Italo pop uh, songs. But uh, the, this, uh, I like these these Italian songs, but um, they were not. Um, uh, uh, yeah, this I have to say. I have to say, uh, when she introduced me to all these styles, like Italian music, we had like me uh, several nights just listening to uh, Italian artists. I was amazed how much there is going on. And the same uh, in the Spanish or uh, South, uh, you know, in the Latin American uh, styles. She introduced me to all these guys, and I was so shocked. There's a big world we didn't know in uh, before in Germany at all. And there's a whole scene going on there, and this is so inspiring. And um, again, she was mainly part of, you know, uh, choosing the, the right songs for our repertoire, you know. And I was going on and, okay, how can we do this? How can I? Because I'm, you know, uh, quite new to many styles and many artists she was introducing to me, and that was the challenge too, you know. But she's a jukebox. You can name any Italian <laughs> artist, she would tell you every song and. It's amazing, so uh, we can really say she's, you know, taking part of uh, all the yeah, song choices for the album. He was taking the song and just bring it to his territory, and he's so versatile and open to to every style. And he sounds like a Latino when he plays a Latin song, totally. All right, <laughs> great. Well, um, concerning Italy, I mean, it's uh, said it's uh, the cradle of music. 
<laughs> I mean, I, me as a classical musician, um, uh, if you think of all the Renaissance and Baroque composers. So yeah, sure. Only. Yeah, and it's still happening in, in uh, nowadays in Italian music too. In pop music, you hear a lot of classical. That's when we came up, you know, with more in, uh, classical arrangement for Quando because Piero Daniele himself he was playing a lot of classical stuff mm -hmm. in his songs too. So he was very open. He yeah, he was get... into jazz a lot and blues yeah. too. All right. All right. And um, you've composed uh, an own uh, an uh, own song on your album, and it has a. A certain Spanish flair to me it sounds sort of like uh, modern flamenco. Um, is there more to come, or is this uh, maybe uh, you're writing more songs like that? Or, or is that... yeah, absolutely. For this uh, album, we thought we should have at least one original song, and uh, so we started this one. I had an instrumental song, and that was kind of more a bossa type of song and then we switched into a more you know flamenco spanish uh, style and she would come up with beautiful words lyrics and we thought yeah we have to go on and for the next album we definitely have more of, of original songs mm -hmm. all right um yeah uh, a sad question uh, how's life in times of corona as you you for you as musicians <laughs> Yeah, I, I think Maybe, it's yeah. t tough for everybody. I mean, that's so sad to see that all artists, no matter what kind of level they have, they're suffering because yeah. you know, uh, you know, despite the economical part, but to not be on stage, to not play, to not perform, this is the hardest part, I guess, for for musicians right now. And uh, so, lucky who can do you know work around a little and have you know something like teaching or you know as us we do you know this journalistic work or whatever kind of, of work you can offer as a musician that would make you survive this this whole tragic scene um, then you're lucky but uh, i hope really that we can continue that was a chance for us to go together as a, as a duo very much and i think yeah. many artists did because what else could they do than just you know be inside and try to be creative, to do some live recordings and and stream it or you know make a record like we did. That's the only goal we can we can have in mind, you know, right now. So we keep on, and it seems we don't have much uh, enough time. Now we're into <laughs> promotion a lot. We did the recording, we do we found a label, we found a distribution. We did the recording and now it's out. Now it's plenty of work of promotion. We didn't really uh, see that coming, but it's you know really a lot of work. And uh, we are planning now to uh, have a stream concert, streaming concert in uh, April. It would be the 15th of April, which is going to be our first uh, streaming live concert. So everybody, uh, check it out. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we go on with promotion as much as we can, and in the meantime, we, we try to offer as uh, live gigs as you know, as as soon we get the chance to. Yeah, we can't wait to play live and go to nice venues again with audience, real audience. Yes, we all miss that. Yeah. <laughs> um. I, I, when I heard the record, I was wondering, Alicia, if you um, uh, also speak all these languages that you uh, <laughs> sing. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I didn't count, uh, it's five or six, uh, I'm not sure. F five on the record, no? yeah. I, I speak five languages myself. And um, because, as I said before, I had the chance to grow up traveling all over the world. If I have to learn them now, <laughs> no chance. <laughs> so I learned them when I was a kid. Um, uh, the, the only language I don't speak fluent, which is on the record, is Portuguese. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't speak Portuguese. I speak Italian, French, English, Swedish, and Spanish. Mm -hmm. Portuguese, but I understand it pretty much. It's not so so far away from uh, something in between Spanish and Italian, so it's not very difficult for me to put it together. But yeah, I don't speak Portuguese. The others I do. <laughs> uh huh. 
but there's no Swedish song on the album. No, not yet, not, not yet. yet. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. never know, so maybe. All right, maybe another nerd question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Martin, could you tell uh, a little bit about uh, recording setup? Uh, um, I mean, we are musicians, but uh, I mean, in, in our, um, middle, meanwhile, we, we are all uh, recording uh, managers as well. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think this is now. <clears throat> oh, I'm, I learned a lot about recording during you know, producing CDs for the magazines and uh, especially for, uh, you know, vocals and guitar. I experienced a lot and uh, I think that was really helpful to do this right now. And now I have a kind of basic recording setup, which we also would use live. We have, for the guitar, I have like two small uh, condensed mics, like this Audio Technica 4041, uh, that goes straight into a uh, uh, mixing interface and uh, then right into Logic and from there the magic starts um, and with plugins, you know, and uh, with her we have a, a Neumann microphone and going to a ISO 1, like Focusrite ISO 1 microphone preamp, also straight into the mixer audio interface into Logic and um, well we, we basically don't uh, record any overdubs, it's just guitar and and vocals, but the guitar is mainly uh, two mics, you know, in this o uh, ORTF microphone system. Mm -hmm. Like you pan the microphones, uh, you can pan it like in an angle of uh, 110 degrees, or which I do is, is a smaller angle, I do like 90 degrees. So I try to make the guitar really sounding as wide as possible, you know, on the left and right, and leave a lot of space for the vocals. So and try to not get in, uh, uh, not to interfere with the vocals. Leave a lot of space for the vocals and yeah. I mean, as I say, the main magic happens uh, while mixing with plugins because everybody can record with an audio interface and microphones. But I would say this is kind of you know half of the of the mixing sound and uh, I try to adapt the guitar sound as much as it would complete the whole overall sound with the vocals you know i would if i do a solo guitar uh, guitar recording i might have set up more microphones and do another mix of the mics but for our setup it's perfect to have just two mics left and right more or less and then the vocals in the middle and then try to work with this you know as a start mm -hmm. so you don't use the the pickup sound I did for a few songs in the beginning, but only like, let's say 10%. And then I just, uh, from the third song on, I was leaving it because the uh, microphone sound alone was was proper enough. Uh, the, the piezo sound would, you know, provide a little bit more uh, mid pressure in, 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 the, in, the, in the sound, but it's not necessary. Maybe you need it live. A little bit more but for a recording here two mics is perfect because it's you know uh, when it's placed in the right way and you hook it up in, in the channels and the right way with the white plugins um, you're there already mm -hmm. uh, I won't write that brackets or up <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, just uh, because I'm um, into uh, recording now and uh, how many uh, takes do you have for one uh, um, piece in general? Well, we, well, we do it like um, when we start uh, recording a song. There's a um, you know we start sitting uh, without any recording gear. We start trying to, to play the song first, um, like a rehearsal. Like a rehearsal. Yes. And yes, we, we would play it like more in the original way and then later on we would think of how can we do it in another way, in, in our own way. You know, we, we did many changes into uh, songs like Beautiful That Way that was a totally completely different groove and style. We made it uh, completely different and um, the composing starts during recording. You know, we would record guitars and vocals 
and then we would listen and go back to what what is there to improve and where can we arrange different you know sequences and then I would re record the guitar and then we would also do new vocal tracks so it, it's kind of a composing uh, process during recording so mm -hmm. it's actually the record is happening while we are recording yeah, while we, yeah. Mm -hmm. and this is a, a new way because usually you would sit and arrange before and you would rehearse and you would maybe play be uh, play a few gigs and then you would go do one take but in our case it's like inventing and composing arranging during recording that was our goal too uh -huh. so um, and now we're when we do the live streaming concert we have to learn our songs you know <laughs> that's the tragic part because he has to learn growing. his own arrangements <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, so we set kind of a benchmark this is how it should sound this is our reference which is good and we, then we would try to come up with maybe new ideas while we have a concert you know to play uh, do more improvising or whatever but we should always you know have our recording as a reference. I mean, you're able to transcribe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's, uh, by the way, uh, um, I would like to do so. I would, you know, put down all the guitar um, tracks on, in Sibelius and maybe offer it as a transcription. So um, if there is time, uh, and it would be nice to have it written down, you know, to maybe even Available, sell it, whoever yeah. is interested. And then, um, yeah, to see what kind of mess we did. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that would be a lot of work. What you, yeah, uh, we know. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, oh, when I, I heard the, the diversity of styles, I was wondering, um, how do you Cho choose uh, the pieces. I mean, um, they are so. Um, how do the pieces come to your repertoire? Maybe another question to Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, some of them, there was kind of a wish, for example, uh, Gracias a la Vida, this song was, I wanted to do this really badly for my father. But then, when we already had like a style, we was just picking the songs that were coming to us. For example, Beautiful That Way, we just decided to do it while watching the movie, Life is Beautiful. Uh -huh. And I remember hearing this song when the movie came out and I was like, that's a beautiful song for us. And also Yukali just came like this unexpected in an unexpected way and then we both love of course Brazilian music bossa nova and samba we are big fans of the style so we both agree mm -hmm. there we got some more nice Brazilian pieces coming up so, I have yeah. a question concerning Yukali um, I mean uh, I was wondering is it, it's a court wild song isn't it yeah right and how come does he, that's, uh, that he has written it in, in French or is it originally French or? No, well, he wrote it uh, in... He, two, he, he wrote the music, but yeah, uh, then wrote in it in 1934. And then mm -hmm. one or two years later, uh, Roger Farnay wrote the lyrics in French. Because mm -hmm. I think, um, because it belongs to... Um, to a, a, a theater piece called Marie Galante mm -hmm. and uh, it was like a whole opera, operetta or something like this and mm -hmm. I think it was mainly represented in Paris, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's why they was writing the lyrics in French, Roger Farnet, mm -hmm. yeah. back oh. in 35. And we were uh -huh. also listening to a version of uh, Diego El Cigala, yeah. a famous singer. That's how we discovered And so. that's, uh, so we took more, uh, you know, we were inspired by his musical performance. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, he sings it in Spanish and uh, so we were uh, kind of, no, we want to stick to French lyrics, but, you know, keep the musical vibe of 
what Elsie Gala was doing there, you know, more in the tango style. And so uh, we also have another song in Italian, it's uh, La Vole La Pazia, it's uh, Italian lyrics, but it's a samba groove, you know, you have this combination of uh, Tokinho doing the musical part, the samba part, but then uh, Vinicius de Moraes was writing the lyrics. Mm -hmm. So it's also a kind of mix of styles and, and you know, and, and backgrounds. So it's, it's very interesting to mix, you know, and that's, uh, we had it, initially we had the idea to make, um, because she sings so many languages, to, you know, make also different styles and, and we were even thinking about making a French album, making a Spanish album, an Italian album. And but instead of doing one by one we would say, okay, let's you know mix them all in one album to bring more variety and go on with the second album again with an, a new mix of languages and styles to make it, you know, rich. And that was kind of the uh, concept we, we followed from the first song on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Alicia, you want to talk about the dedication of this album uh, as well? Oh. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm so proud and happy. It's dedicated to my father. Mm -hmm. uh, my father, he passed away in 2011 uh, because of a cancer and my father was everything to me. He was my best friend. And, my my mother and my father and I we were one, mm -hmm. always together. Uh, we was very close to each other, and uh, he was a very musical man. He was not a professional musician, but he was always playing guitar as a hobby, learning like classical pieces like Concierto de Aranjuez, Capricho Arabe. And he was practicing all my childhood. I remember him when he had free time. He was sitting there with his guitar and he was actually good for being an autodidact player and uh, then when I started to sing he was so proud and happy and when I was doing in the beginning gigs in um, bars and clubs he was like this is not for you you have to sing in Spanish you have to sing melodic music you have to so he would have been really 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 proud to to see what we are doing now. He would have loved Martin as a person, as a musician. And so, and when we started to talk about this idea and songs, some of his favorite songs are in this album, like Gracias a la Vida, of course, Garganta con Arena and the Italian music. He said, it was his idea, let's dedicate it to your father. And I was like, <laughs> in tears, I said, yeah, let's do it. It means a lot, a lot to me, and I know he's he's saying all this, and he's very proud of us. Okay, that's a wonderful. We um, ask a Schlusswort <laughs> would be uh, uh, like a last word, <laughs> last comment. Ah, okay. <laughs> but I mean, uh, there's maybe one final question. Uh, what are your projects for for the future? Another CD. Um, um, I mean, you already talked about um, 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 streaming concert. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your plans? <laughs> yeah, right now we are very much into promotion of the first album. And uh, so the next plans are also to do the streaming concert on the 15th of April. So we had to set just a date and make it possible until uh, we keep pushing things, you know, we're like, ah, oh, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. But now we said, really, we have to set the date first and then we're going to work on this only. Um, but we also have, uh, you know, two songs already for the second album. So we hope to finish the second album, you know, by summer. And um, then we have, uh, you know, another interview coming up for uh, the Insel. It's called Das Insel Radio on Mallorca. Mm -hmm. uh, they have new studios now and they were inviting us um, so we're gonna have a date with an uh, interview and recording session in the new studios in uh, about two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. So um, there's uh, you know a few things coming up and um, we you know, we're mainly now promoting the album and trying to figure out marketing strategies which is really important right now because we can't play live we have to you know sell it online as 
much as possible. Mm -hmm. But we're doing well. We're really happy and so motivated. We have found so many uh, seminars on the web um, to promote, um, you know, ourselves in the right way. And musically, we have a whole album coming up, and uh, it's it's really a lot of excitement. Yeah, hopefully our main plan is to record and make music years and years and years. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to your next CD and, uh, uh, and I would love to hear you live, maybe one day. <laughs> oh. If you yeah. come to Germany or, or yeah, I mean, uh, Mallorca, I mean, that must be a, a great place to to play live uh, i mean uh, um, I, if you listen to this album uh, it must be wonderful wonderful to sit outside in the evening and to listen to your music i mean uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, one can imagine this is perfect for a mediterranean evening uh, yeah so. thank you yeah our plan is also to do some concerts here but in germany too we get yeah. already some. We unfortunately we had to cancel already like a few dates. Right. Dates. So we're yeah. gonna have them as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I talked to somebody and and many concerts uh, were postponed to the uh, next year, and <laughs> and yeah. now it's you don't know if uh, concerts in summer will take place or not. You no one can say. Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit a question mark, everything right now, mm. but hopefully it gets better yeah. soon. Yeah, that's why we thought, okay, now this is not sure, can we do it this summer or are we postponed to next year? So we have to play, we have to do something, so yeah. that's when we came up with the idea to do a live streaming concert and you know, get it uh, spread on the internet as much as possible to you know make people get to know us. And so uh, that's the you know only chance we have right now and to sell CDs and make promotion make interviews like this and uh, get on online platforms and online media and you no know, you no know, just spread the word wherever we can yeah all right so um, I wish you a wonderful weekend in my own thank thank enjoy the sun <laughs> <laughs> And uh, let's hope uh, Coronas uh, will be will will soon be gone. <laughs> yeah. All the times will get better, and uh, I am um, looking forward to see you in Germany. Thank yeah. you very thank you. much, Jens. Yeah, it you was wonderful, us. and thank you for your support. Yeah, many thanks to this. You're always welcome as a special guest for a concert. And Absolutely. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye you. Que je l'aperçois, alors je sens en moi mon cœur qui bat. Da-da-da-da <laughs>